Cook Public Library, Waynesville, Ohio. Today we are interviewing Mr. Robert Coleman Wasson. And Mr. Wasson, can you tell us a little bit about where you're from and how you entered the service? All right. Basically, I was born in southern Indiana. My dad was a stenographer in the railroad, so we moved up and down the railway. Uh, my, my time spent just before getting in the Air Force was in northern Indiana, a place called, a little town called New Paris. Uh, <clears throat> uh, we, lived at, we came there in the Depression and lived very meekly and very well. But we had a good time and we were good friends. Uh, I did graduate from New Paris High School with, uh, 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 I don't know what part kind of honors, but some. <laughs> And I played basketball and baseball and so forth. It was a unique school in the fact that uh, it was basically we had ministers as principals. Nothing wrong with that, but you end up with uh, a principal once in a while who's going to give you a spanking and he's a fair preacher. So, with any event, uh, I did graduate from there and uh, went directly into Goshen College. At Goshen College, uh, I had two of my friends with me, and uh, they came with me up there, with there. And all of us award was, and uh, we found about, uh, all of us found out about it, riding in a car going to a lake in, uh, in Indiana for a picnic, and war was declared. We soon, uh, in a couple, within a couple of months, uh, probably decided we'd like to, we were going to get picked anyway, we're, we're 18, and uh, <clears throat> I was not a 17, I was a young guy, and anyway, uh, we decided that, uh, and I went to Goshen College for a year, and one of them went there too, but the other went to someplace else, but the three of us were together there, enough that we decided we would go over and take the test at Fort Wayne at the Air Force, we all took it, and all of us passed, and the three of us as good friends kept going around together, even though I was in college and uh, the other one was in one college, some of them were none. But anyway, all of us in the next year, this was in, this was in 73, in uh, 70, uh, yeah, I started that. That's 73. In 43, 43, right? What? 43? Uh, 43. Yeah. Uh, I went to college, and, and as I graduated uh, out of college, we were called. And this is the next year, 44 would be. We were all taken at the same time, going to Mississippi. And we ended up in Mississippi, the three of us friends, so forth and so on. The difference took place there because the, it was graded on, on tests and desire and so forth, and what was empty. So there I got separated from my other two friends. Where they went, I have no idea at that time. Uh, but there at Biloxi, we, uh, oh, we did things like, uh, they gave us, uh, I don't know why, they gave us rifles with sabers on the end so you could learn how to jab a man and lift up to kill him. Uh, I'd never had one before and never had one afterwards. But nevertheless, it was different in interest. And North Carolina, I mean, in, in Mississippi, uh, we came in that, oh, I was telling her, or you, maybe, about the, the blackout. On the way down in Dothan, Alabama, and, uh, not Dothan, Alabama. Was that Biloxi? Well, no, that's Mississippi. Uh, what's the capital of Alabama? Atlanta? Hmm? Is it Atlanta? No. Well, anyway, as we went through the town, they made the, Particularly, they turned out all the lights and made everybody pull the blinds down. And it was because they had information that German submarines were in the Gulf of Mexico. And where they were, nobody knew. So all of them, at least that I were around for a while, did that. And it was unusual, and I wrote home about it. Uh, Mississippi was taking just the free things for whatever was going to happen. Tests, uh, a lot of uh, waste kind of hikes and so forth to see what could be done and that kind of thing. From there, we were judged to where we go. And I went, became a pilot. 
my friend, one friend became a navigator, and another, the third one, the other three of us became a bombardier, which I guess is unusual to happen like that. But we sort of just separated. And uh, the first thing, I went to uh, Burling, Burlington, North Carolina, Burlington North, to a college there, and I can't remember the name. I'll think of it later. Was it Elon? Elon. You knew that. Did you? Did I tell you that earlier? Okay. At Elon College, at Elon College, we took, uh, learned things and, and basically a lot of weather, the identification of airplanes in fractions of seconds, uh, how to run uh, 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 telegraph, this kind of thing. That was pretty easy for me because my father was a telegraph girl, belly by growing up. And uh, anyway, we got out of there. So the other thing that happened there that was of interest to me, we would march completely, always, from wherever we were, to, together, to, to food, to dinner, and so forth. And as I think I was telling you, we get in, we get in there, and it was as a cadet, because we were Air Force cadets. And we used the thing to did like they did in, in West Point. Now, if the, as I said, if the salt was down at this, to the, 10 feet away because of the guys, uh, you never just said, give me the salt. It was, if no one cares for the salt, please pass the salt. And it went on like that with all kinds of food. Garbage was always in the, at that uh, the sixth position, 60th position, and that bottom of your, put, put the bottom of your plate. So that, all of that was in order. And when the beans came in, you put it one place, butter was another. Uh, the same thing went for in that course, in those courses in the college, uh, it was that way with uh, things that you did. For example, you you fold your socks so there's no edge showing. You fold the handkerchief so there's no edge showing. Part of the inspection always was to come in and drop a quarter to make sure that, and this is what everybody said they didn't believe. You drop a quarter on the bed and it'll bounce up and you can catch it. And that was done every morning. So we were tight people, we couldn't get, we had, one hour of uh, relaxation at, uh, I think it was 4.30 4 or 5 for an hour, and that's all. Now, I've not told you this before, but there were very few guys in that college where we took the space, but there were a lot of girls. But we only had part of an hour that they were even see them. And so I got to know a couple of them, and everybody did, because but the minute the bugle blew, you better get back or you, you're in trouble. Uh, how are we doing? We're fine. Okay. Uh, out of the blocks, they went, I went to, the, to college, like I said, and then went from there to, uh, where did we go? Let's we see. went to Columbus, Mississippi. Yes. There was my first, well, at the, at the, uh, at the college, we had a Piper's Cub that would take take us up, but only a few times, two or three times, and about all we got, but we got to be on an airplane, and to fly, actually to fly. Uh, then from there, we, I went to uh, Mississippi, Columbus, Mississippi, and here was primary training. This is training with an open top on it, and uh, uh, it was just a great, a great plane, but I learned, you learn first of all to fly the thing with an instructor. And he'll show you how to do, like I was telling you back, the curves, uh, how to do acrobatic. We can go up and do spins and go through the clouds. And after after seven hours, if you can't fly, if you can't can't make it, you're gone. And as I think I told you, I had an Indian, a nice guy, that could not turn to turn to uh, make a circle because you had to pull out on the pull back on the stick to do it. I felt bad about it, but it was part of the things that happened. Was it physically hard to pull it back? No, no. Well, okay. it, you do it so quick, you just don't okay. mess it. If I'm going that way, I'm going, I'm going 100 mile an hour. Mm -hmm. Bang, I better do it quick. Girl. But the idea was, if you can't hold a level, you're not going to have problems. You're going to have problems all mm -hmm. through everything. And I didn't really think much of that idea because he was my friend, but I did understand why. Uh, in basic training, uh, well, I, that was in 
primary training, that was that, what I was talking about. Basic training, we went to uh, Mississippi, as I told you. And their basic training is uh, just, uh, it was just more, more exacting. And, and everything was there double, like the identification of aircraft, in a tenth of a second, they'll say you need can do it in less than that. Uh, the knowing of the how to use the key to send send uh, letters uh, by signals and so forth. How to swim? You had to know how to swim. That was kind of the make believe, uh, and and uh, I got to say that there was a top on them now, top on the plane, secondary, and the flight was great, but. They would check you out on it, and you do your own thing. The worst thing that happened to me in the Air Force is that I took this plane and went up in, the, uh, just to go up and practice. And I got up there and did one row. I turned over, I was going to fly upside down, and oil leaked in. All the way, and I'm scared as hell, excuse my language. But oil was coming down on me, came down in the bottom. I don't know yet where it came from, there was a leak someplace. And as you may well imagine, I went back right now, because if that runs out, I go down. I'm scared, I went back. They took it, they didn't know what was wrong, and that's all I ever heard of it. Mm -hmm. But it was one of the worst things that happened to me in the whole Air Force. Mm -hmm. uh, from there we went to, now we're, we learned to fly instruments, basically, and then we went to, to uh, Greenville, I guess it was. And, there was basically was uh, it was basically to learn how to fly on instruments. And they would take take a green piece of plastic and put it up along the windows, and they would uh, turn everything in on on red. And you now can't see out, but you can see the instruments. And so probably you all told you that before. Mm -hmm. I and we would fly out maybe a hundred. Uh, 100 miles or something or less, and on and he would say, "Now you take it back." So we would take it back by flying whether we were one side or the other by the ding, ding, dings, and all of us had to pass it, and we did. So that got me out. Okay, now I've got a pilot. I had Bull Thomas get pre present me with wings at graduation there, and all of us in our class, not just me, but it was all in our class. Uh, was Lowell there for Lowell, a particular reason? Well, his son was a uh, okay. his son was a pilot, and he was a teacher. He was teaching, not me, okay. but he was there. Uh, I got in. Well, I had, I got in a theater. I guess I can tell you that I got in a theater with three or four of my other guys, and all of us started to smoke and caught on fire. We we're in the back row mm -hmm. of the theater, and these people crawling all over, mm -hmm. and I said. Yeah, sit down. It's either going to kill us or we'll get out. And it, you know, I've never been in a thing like that. And it's not fun. Mm -hmm. Man, those, those guys just come banging over the ladies, too. They were mm -hmm. trying to get out. But the aisle was full, and these guys going out. Well, we just sat there, and the smoke cleared, and they, even the movie came on later. But something happened. And that's one of the interesting things of my time. But we did all graduate. And as I told you earlier, the three of us, one was the bombardier, one a pilot, and one a navigator. And the bombardier was a friend of mine that I told you there. The navigator was, uh, he, he told some things that uh, they would go down, get over the place, and there would be smoke, and it would turn out that wasn't where they wanted to be. So they'd have to go someplace else. He said, we're, they were, uh, ACAC was coming up with all of these guys. I, not me, but them. Because I was back uh, at that time doing some other things. Can you tell uh, our viewers what an ACAC gun is? What? Can you tell people what an ACAC gun is? Machine gun. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's a name for all kinds of things. Anyway, out of this whole thing of uh, back to the uh, flying, <clears throat> I graduated. The old Thomas was there. <clears throat> They were not producing planes in, a, in our United States to take care of the ones that were ready to go. And we were put in a pilot pool in Dothan, not Dothan. Yeah. Dothan, Alabama? Yeah. 
We're not just, you know, what was the, where was the first one I had there? Uh, Biloxi. Okay, then it was Dothan. Yes. In fact, I went back there to see a couple of years ago, everything gone, the airport, the whole ball thing. The only thing we could do was, uh, we got our flight time in so we get the little bit of pay that we got. But other than that, that we would take turns, bunches of us stand, sitting out along the runway whether anybody was coming or not. Everybody read Reader's Digest. But anyway, there were, it started that uh, <coughs> the pilots were coming back from Japan. And I think you probably have some of this. Okay. They came back and they, we, our duty was to take them up, let, make sure that they knew what they were doing, and ensure the devil did. It dies. Scared the heck out of me sometimes. But anyway. Uh, they had to be checked out by somebody in that plane. So we did that, and we did other things, just making up time because there was no plane. Finally it came. I got, uh, and you may not have that. Uh, I was taken out of Dothan, Alabama, put in the pilot pool at, at uh, B-17s in Columbus. Now, is that in there? Did that put that? No. Okay. Now I'm out, and I'm a pilot in there. I go there and I no more hit the ground than the guy standing me up to fly the plane. But I didn't go there just, I, I, I say some things but I can't be sure how many flights I had in that thing. But all at once the war ended, and I told you that mm -hmm. right there. All at once the war ended, uh, the thing, there was no gasoline for airplanes, none of them flew. Uh, Everybody they were just doing nothing, and they were giving, letting people go home as fast as they could because they didn't want them there to feed them and, and dry and so forth. So that's how I got out. And I went back to Columbus just to do get some pickup stuff because I was in northern Indiana, wasn't very far there. Mm -hmm. And I like Columbus, Ohio. It's a pretty nice place. You talked a little bit about drum outs. Can you describe what that is? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I did that because I mentioned that to your friend, and he was surprised. I think he said he'd never done it. A dark drum out is where somebody has broken very strongly the regulations. And in, in some cases, we had a large number of young lady black people cleaning the dorm where we were living. And sometimes uh, they got a little out of their hand. And this time it was apparently. I didn't know anything about it. Nobody knows. And all once, if you go out and have uh, eat your eat dinner or supper, if you hear that drum bing, and then maybe another ten minutes it bings again, all through the night just closing up, and any announcer is going to be a drama. And these, you go, you, you lay down, and you know you're not going to sleep long, well. but that drum keeps going, and it gets closer and closer and closer together. And it gets so close and all of us the thing says everybody connected. And we would go out around this area where they had a sta uh, up on a stage and they called the boat and they'd get, whoever it was uh, would be called uh, to reduce all the, 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 the I don't know exactly how the wording was, but they took his wings, they took his part of his uniform and said you're done. Now, how where he went from there, or how he got any place, I don't know. I don't know if he had to walk away or not. But I, I was in three of them, and it, it all was basically because of a guy chasing a woman. Now, well, I can't say they all were, but I think I told you how the girl, a black girl, carried a knife. Okay, well, I, you know that. Uh, after that, I went home. Uh, to my house in northern Indiana, and uh, I soon I went to Purdue, and soon after that I got married. After I graduated, we moved to Chicago, and at Chicago uh, they were doing they were doing uh, rocket courses and things that might be in the future. And it wasn't any great things. They sent it to me, and and I, I did some of them, and I don't know what I didn't learn that much, but. It was interesting, and I did some other things, but nevertheless, uh, I don't know whether that helped me or not, but I went there from a first lieutenant, I mean from a, just a lieutenant, to a first lieutenant, uh, after I, as I was graduate, as I, as my, as my 
what I want to say, I, eight your years. Reserves. Eight year reserves. Yes, mm -hmm. I was in for there, and I, I might the uh, the first thing that the last thing that was sent me was the fact that I had I I knew I was getting it, I, but I had the first aid thing and uh, the flag showing it and all that kind of thing that mm -hmm. took me completely out now and, and anything to do with the airplanes. How am I doing? You're doing great. Can you talk about selling the war bonds in Alabama? <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the one of the most interesting things was that. We get all these guys where we live in these places and you're not the cleanest kind of people in the world. But now you get spats, leggings, and and uh, you you better have a clean pair of khakis and they put a kind of a coat on you of some kind. But we would go to and this was we basically went to Montgomery, Alabama, and we were up north of it. So we would get there, and we would all go together with the drums and so forth down the main part of town, and it was a call for bonds, sounding bonds. And uh, it was interesting because what the, the, we would do what was called, uh, I guess, monkey practice. Now, that would stop every once in a while, and they would do this, not too many times because it's a long dip. But what it means is that you take about six or six rows of guys in their spats and all this stuff, and they would call a guy would be calling out the, the, the thing, and they had, on call would step, take their hand, put it down, and walk on, and the guy in front wouldn't get an empty one, and the guy in back that had been empty now has a, a gun, okay, and. We'd go down a little bit further and they'd do some other thing like this. It was part of the parade and it was fun. Now I got to do it a little bit now. I wasn't any good at it, so they didn't want me to do it. But I did get to stay on the step where the, uh, the guy in the Civil War that became the, who ran the Civil War for people? He, he, had, he was in the, the building there. He had a, Pledge, and I stood to where the guy did when he took his hand up his, his uh, dictation into the, the head of the head of the rebel army and the rebel uh, the south. Uh, I don't know how much you want. I keep rambling. You can keep going. We have time. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I got involved in some of the things that we were doing with formations, not me, but what they did. And that's how I got really interested in the uh, in the uh, the people that ask me about around down there, right down there. What the heck do you call them? Uh oh. Are you the, talking about the why? No, not the why. The uh, people that came from from uh, the east and settled here. Oh, shakers. Shakers. So I got, I got involved in looking at some of this stuff. It became interesting. And uh, I have a picture of her doing her shaker thing and, the, and singing. And it's about this, my list. And I found out that there were words to it. But I found out nobody knows them. And I don't think anybody knows them yet. But the shakers were good people. And uh, that had nothing to do with the war. But it was one of my interests for a while. And well, what did you do when you got back to civilian life? Went what? to college. And then what was your job? I went job? to Purdue. I have a degree yeah. in, in uh, chemical engineering. Okay, and then where did, were you employed? I, I was employed out of Purdue. At that time, uh, there was a lack of people. And so uh, these industries would send people down to Purdue that uh, are looking for people to come to them. And fortunately, a lot of guys tried. Fortunately, I was chosen on one lady. It was Container Corporation of America. Mm -hmm. And I went to Chicago with them. And then we, uh, uh, after I got out of college, uh, that was that was after I got out of college. After I got out of college, uh, Betty and I got married about a year later. And with this thing, we moved to Columbus. Uh, Cl I'm sorry, Cleveland. And uh, I, I knew I was in the reserve, but did very little about it. And, and it long until I got this thing out of the. In the I didn't follow it from the standpoint of what was going on, but uh, I was out of it from my standpoint. Mm -hmm. And I guess I about rambled enough. Now, do you have children? 
Yes. How many children? I have three. Three children? Yes, I okay. have a, a two boys and a girl. Okay. And the son's the oldest, he's, uh, he's in college now. And so. what, what have we not touched on that you would like to say in your interview? Is there anything that we've overlooked that we should mention? Or anything that you would like to say? No. Well, I'm trying to think. I think, by and large, they, they did a very good job. I didn't think so at the time, because some of the things were just raising hell with people. And I was uh, one of those who got these, uh, what do I call them? You, you call it better than I did, the one that had a walker and a gun. Oh, walking, walking minutes or no, hours? but I can't think what A drill? Did. Drill. And I had uh, you, an hour, a, a gig was an hour, okay. I went out of a uh, thing, one thing, a nest hall, and I had a coat on, an overcoat, because it was cold. And I didn't have the top button button. And I ended up six hours of walking. And I had to wear my overcoat for six hours of walking. And I quite frankly, I, I scammed some of it because I knew where the heck he was up there. So, no, I, let's say I, I was not unhappy with the Air Force, except I wasn't actually happy about having to go someplace to my shoot at me. But I had a lot of good friends. I learned a lot. Really, I did. And I went back. My dad was a telegrapher, as I told you, up and down the railroad. So we would talk about codes and so forth. But by and large, uh, I had no real problem with the Air Force. Uh, you know, things happen that you don't like, and a lot of them did. Like I could never understand why they had bayonet pra practice when I was never going to have a gun. And uh, just, I, I went home and bragged about the meals we would have at the college because nobody else did that. And, and I, I really didn't disagree with the Air Force in all my time there. Uh, there are times I would like to have been out because instead of uh, being there, I uh, say roughly three years, I think it was, uh, I could have been out of college. Right. I found out I might not have found my wife. She went to college there mm -hmm. one year before I got there. And I find that uh, her mother went to that college and I went to the college and all of her relatives went to the college. We were married in a uh, Mennonite church up in Northern Indiana. Mm -hmm. And we go back quite often. No, we're not quite often, but we go back. We're not much there anymore. They tore down the church and uh, uh, not a little town that I was in. That's of interest, but to me, just briefly, I'll say that when my dad, uh, my dad was caught in the, uh, the uh, big rush where nobody had anything. Then, we were living in a little town called New Paris, and we had gotten there by because he didn't have a job. So we got there a little early. And, is that for you? The, uh, uh, all at once I noticed a little kid come down there, and this kid was in the first grade, and he took me to church that Sunday, and we went to a Methodist church. And, he was one of the guys that finally I ended up with in the Air Force. Mm. Uh, and, and his parents were real nice. His, I, his father was started a drugstore in a little town. And I'm talking about uh, before even the, this is when there was nothing. I mean, the, 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 the land came and no food, no nothing. I, you're not old enough to even know, I don't think. No, not about I'm that. I'm sure you aren't. <laughs> because he would then, He'd been fired off the railroad because he reduced people, and and we had not very much to eat, and all the uh, all the hobos would come by, and mm -hmm. right on the railroad. So my mother always said, mm -hmm. "Once you can buy a twin load of bread for a nickel, you can buy a gallon." I I was big enough to take a uh, to take a can, a gallon can to the the uh, creamery, and for a nickel they give you a gallon a ga gallon of milk. Mm -hmm. I can go, you don't need me. I, I can go on and on with this stuff. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from this area. Are you really? Yes. We're up here in town here? Um, no, from a neighboring town. Okay. Okay. Um, 
You said that your wife went to college. Did she? Um, she went to uh, she went to college at Goshen College for a year, and that was all she did. Okay. And uh, and that was not because of me. It was just one of those things because I don't really know now what she does, but I think maybe it was because they didn't have the money. Uh huh. And that's a big factor. Yes. And I I had trouble getting through with the money. Did you have to work your way through, more or less? More or less, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had a lady that lived next door to us. I lived in a little town called New Paris here. Goshen is here, and it's just for the car, uh, six miles away. Okay. So I went mm -hmm. home, and I, I, one lady was working in this town, and one of our neighbors. So fortunately, she would take me mm -hmm. and drop me off, mm -hmm. and then they'd hitchhike home. For the, mm -hmm. Then hitchhiking was the answer. I hitchhiked all over the whole United States. In fact, when I got out of the Air Force, uh, it came into, uh, into Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. And I got out of the age of town and hitchhiked to northern Indiana. Mm -hmm. and made. So every time I used to see people, I got a job that I was going from Chicago, driving all over the United States. Mm -hmm. And I'll get off of this minute, but anyway, I used to hitchhike all the time, and I vowed after I got out of school, it was just danger, I don't do it. But coming back and going, I did see a guy, I was on my way to Buffalo, from out of uh, Chicago or someplace, and this guy is thumbing, and I picked him up, and man, that guy was big, he made the car roll that way. Well, I was worried about the guy, but I got a, I got a near Pennsylvania, and he had to get out, and man, I, I was glad. <laughs> big guy, he could have knocked me out of that thing. So I never picked up anybody to hitchhike anymore. But I did, I got a Purdue, I'd, I'd hitchhike home all the time. And it was great because a lot of guys, had, somebody came down to get them and they'd pick me up and go to the Northern Indiana. Uh, and I know, I've heard my father say, at that time everybody picked up a serviceman who was hitchhiking. Yes, they did. Oh, when I was hitchhiking at the Air Force, I mean in uh, at Purdue, so just remember the war had just ended. Mm -hmm. The war had just ended, and it was so crowded. We were up on the fourth floor, and it was all flat, all across a big dormitory. Three, oh gosh, it was along this building. But they put all these cots up there for all these guys. Now, trying to go to the John was a rough time with all those people up there. But you know the thing that happened? There was all kinds of magazines and so forth up there, and all these guys. And I don't know who started them, but for liquor, the advertisements in magazine, they tore them out and that whole four walls all the way around was whiskey <laughs> and beer. <laughs> but I had a good time in college and I finally made it true. Did you have uh, brothers or sisters that served in the military? No. Okay. I have a brother that uh, uh, it, mentally he was not well mm -hmm. and he was uh, had been in, with my mother and dad for a long time, and he came and lived with us. And it got to a point where he would do things that the neighbors would call when I was going. Mm -hmm. He'd go out and let the lawnmower run until it ran out of gas. And I know one time he he didn't turn the stove off. He asked to. They called me, and we finally put him in a in a place that uh, I hated to do it, and he was really upset by me doing it. But there was no other answer. Mm -hmm. No other answer. And he went from that one to one more, and uh, he was there the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. And he he's been dead for a good number of years. In he, fact, when he went to school, he was they wouldn't let him go after the first grade because he was not able to. Mm -hmm. Did did your father serve in the military? No, my okay. father was uh, he was a telegrapher all his life. Okay. And, uh, I had an uncle who was in the First World War. Mm -hmm. I had a great grandfather who was in the Civil War. So we've got three of us, one uh -huh. way or another. Okay. And did any of your children serve in the military? No. Okay. No, I, my kids are not. Well, my son's uh, grandson's old enough. My son was old enough. And there was no, well, there was no war for mm -hmm. one thing. So okay. no, they did not. Let, neither did my grandson go. Do uh, you have anything else that we need to? put into the interview? If you put all that in, you're going to have a loose book. <laughs> I apologize, then. No, that's fine. Well, if you have nothing else to add, then we'll, we'll just close. Okay. Unless you can think of anything. And today is August 28, 2008 at the Mariel Cook Public Library, Waynesville, Ohio. Thank you.
Okay. Do you have a card or something with the, the, the 